today we will learn about uh, excel we have seen uh, the chassis the types of chassis the engine is mounted uh, suppose at front then power is transmitted from engine to this transmission device that is gearbox okay through clutch and then from propeller shaft so this is different here now this power is given to wheel uh, by this differential okay so this shaft is called the axle okay so this is a rear axle uh, when power is given to the wheel by that axle it is also called as a lie axle and suppose uh, these are the front uh, wheel and uh, the axle uh, on which this wheels are mounted okay it will be a front axle and in this case it is a dead axle now types of uh, axle that is classification of axle okay so according to their location either it can be a front axle or rear axle as just we have seen and according to their function lie axle and dead axle okay now uh, if you see this is a front axle okay and this is a rear axle and if power is given to the wheel by that axle is also called as a lie axle and if power is not given and wheels are rotating around that it called as a dead axle now uh, we axle is nothing but central shaft okay for rotating gear and a uh, wheel okay uh, here now uh, on wheel like uh, if the wheel is rotated uh, with help of axle it for the lie axle and if it is uh, rotating around the axle it is called the dead axle and the uh, other mountings are also provided now uh, in case of rear axle it can be a full floating axle it can be a semi floating axle it can be a three quarter axle a uh, front axle uh, we call uh, or we classify as a dead front axle or live uh, front axle and a front axle may have stub axle okay so types of stub axle is nothing but iliot reverse iliot lamon reverse lamon rear axle is placed uh, between the differential and driving wheel get to transmit power from differential to the driving wheel okay and bearing are also provided now uh, what is main purpose of uh, axle okay, particularly a rear axle is that it should withstand weight of vehicle okay and it should transmit uh, engine power to the rear wheel okay it acts as a uh, like axle needle for the wheel and it acts as a housing for fine drive differential and half shaft okay so which are the forces coming on uh, axle okay so like uh, in most of the cases so weight of the vehicle is transmitted to the axle okay with uh, like uh, axle casing and then to axle okay there is suspension okay body is mounted the driving thrust like force uh, as exerted uh, due to the engine power okay uh, on the wheel and that uh, driving thrust that is road reaction should be taken uh, taken care by the axle shock reaction okay as power is given and side thrust uh, in case of side forces okay so forces these are the forces acting uh, on the axle that is weight of the body by suspension and body mounted then uh, like if it is a passenger vehicle that uh, uh, passengers as well as goods load also comes on axle you to support that then driving thrust that is road reaction there is a rough uh, road okay and uh, that reaction or uh, it goes to the wheel and from wheel to the axle so it should support the uh, driving thrust torque reaction that is power is given to the wheel okay and uh, that should uh, be taken care by the axle and side thrust in case of thrust so see this is a one photograph here okay so power is coming from engine to uh, gearbox okay and uh, then from propeller shaft so this is got the differential now axle is mounted in between okay so this is outer casing and you can see uh, there is a space for the leaf spring or whatever the suspension provided for in this case and uh, the wheel is mounted on that axle okay so here in this case uh, the bearings and all these things are uh, weight is supported here like this and just we have seen the driving uh, reaction thrust side thrust and weight of the body okay so now we'll see the types of uh, rear axle that is semi floating axle full floating axle and three quarter axle uh, 
surface out of floating itself. Now, if you see, this is a comparison diagram for uh, semi floating, fully floating, and free water. Okay. Now, uh, see, this is axle. Wheel is mounted on axle. Okay. And uh, this is the casing on which the suspension and uh, weight of the body comes. Now, it indicates that uh, the complete weight of the body is supported by axle through this casing and bearing. Okay. And uh, and it is called the floating because it is normally floating in between the wheel and differential. So the axles are floated in between wheels and differential. That's why it is called as a floating axle. And uh, particularly semi-floating axle here, uh, this is axle uh, on which uh, the hub is mounted and on, on hub there is a wheel. Okay, and uh, the weight of body comes uh, or it is supported by the casing. Okay, this axle housing. And through this axle housing, it is supported by the axle. Okay, so there is a chance of uh, suppose this is a road reaction and this is a weight uh, of body. So there is a chance of sharing at this point. Okay, we will see that again. In case of fully floating axle, then we will go come to the uh, three quarter floating axle. Now here you can see the axle is freely rotating. Okay, and whereas weight of bo body of vehicle is directly supported by the wheel okay you can see there are two bearings here and weight of the body is supported by the wheel here and axle is freely rotating okay so this is called the fully floating axle okay and in case of three quarter axle uh, there is a combination of these two partly load is supported by the axle through this bearing and partly load is supported by the wheel i will see one by one okay uh, floating axle, uh, why it is called as a floating axle because it is floated in between differential and wheel. Now see in this diagram, okay, so this is a bearing, so weight of body is supported by this axle through this bearing, okay, and uh, the wheel is mounted directly on the axle, okay, here, uh, this is the hub and there will be a wheel over here, okay. Axle shaft carries both uh, weight and transmit top, okay. Uh, wheel is mostly bolted on flange on the wheel as I just shown here. Okay, a semi floating axle since on the car and light duty vehicles normally. Why? Because as I said, uh, because load is comes on the axle, either it should be very strong, okay, or it, it is normally used for the light duty vehicles. Okay, uh, so uh, semi floating axles are limited to capacity, uh, but they are cheaper and lighter. See, this is actual uh, diagram here. This is axle. This is housing, and you can uh, observe here uh, the weight of body is supported by the uh, suspension system and spring, uh, like this loose spring here. And uh, this field is mounted. This is a flange on which wheel is mounted. Okay, you can see these are the bolts. Okay, on which wheel is uh, mounted. Okay, and you can have uh, because of this, uh, there can be a steering action at point A, as shown here. So what is the advantages? As I said, it is cheapest and simplest, and uh, this mostly application is used for the light duty vehicles like car. You may find the semi floating axle. Now full floating axle. Okay, here uh, the weight is supported by the wheels. Okay, and uh, these are the bearings. Uh, this axle shaft, which is axle casing, and there is a bearing in between uh, this uh, axle casing and the uh, housing. Okay, so. Completely, the weight weight of that uh, vehicle is supported by the wheel, okay, and that uh, axle is freely rotating. So that is the most important thing uh, in case of fully floating axle. Torque is transmitted by uh, separated axle shaft, okay, that carries no weight. Okay, full rotating uh, floating axles are normally used for the heavy vehicles like trucks and buses. Okay, so it is costlier. So this is another diagram here. Okay, it is costlier. Uh, than the uh, semi floating axle, but it is it can take the load, okay. That is the advantages of this fully floating axle. Again, this is comparative diagram here, you can understand uh, bearing, axle, uh, wheel, okay, uh, uh, axle housing, and here you can see. So, this is a spindle, you can observe here the axle can freely load it, whereas this is a complete uh, housing for the wheel. Okay, so these are the bearings. Okay, uh, 
uh, and the, the load of uh, vehicle is comes on the wheel through this bearing okay and wheel hub whereas axle is not supporting the directly load of uh, vehicle body weight load as well as the passenger or goods weight load now three quarter is the in between these two here the partly load is taken by the axle and partly load is taken by the wheel through this hub okay so there is a bearing here uh, mounted on the axle casing and uh, the axle is supported uh, here the wheel is mounted on this uh, axle and load can be taken care by the axle as well as this hub that is wheel it is uh, advantages is normally used for the like uh, medium vehicle okay it is uh, in between you can say fully floating axle and semi floating axle so this is a, again another diagram here here again if you just compare uh, the semi floating axle fully floating axle now with the help of tire and all these things you can easily understand what is the difference between semi floating and fully floating just here now this wheel is completely separated than the uh, uh, this axle and uh, axle casing okay so bearing is here and you just imagine uh, the vehicle body is a uh, load is supported at this location okay whereas here you can see uh, this axle is completely fully rotative whereas the weight of uh, vehicle is supported by the wheel here and this is in between these two there are two bearings here where there is a single bearing and uh, the uh, axle uh, housing is here axle is inside it okay and partly load can be taken care by the axle shaft and by wheel welcome